the sports card industry is having a tech revolution, and the Southern California-based company Collectors wants to lead the charge. Led by 36-year-old CEO and chairman Nat Turner, the company is updating the way sports cards get graded, an increasingly crucial service as prices for high-end collectibles soar into the millions. Collectors examines tens of thousands of sports cards a day, making sure they're authentic and judging their physical condition. The company is now starting to use high-tech tools to speed up the process and give customers more information about their prized belongings. Video cameras track every movement of every card through the company's offices and allow for GPS location monitoring. There are QR codes on the card holders and a fleet of imaging machines that take high-resolution photos of each incoming and outgoing card. Additionally, computer vision software helps researchers quickly identify each card's year, make, and addition. Those upgrades helped collectors secure $100 million in funding in January, pushing its valuation to $4.3 billion. That's a five-fold increase from a year earlier when a group of investors took collectors private. The company, which was until recently known as Collectors Universe, was created in 1999. But its history stretches back to the 1986 founding of Professional Coin Grading Service, or PCGS, and the 1991 founding of Professional Sports Authenticator, or PSA. Both divisions are in the business of verifying that collectibles are authentic and unaltered. They also look for printing defects and physical damage like creases, assigning a 1 through 70 score for coins and a 1 through 10 score for cards. Customers pay a fee from $50 to $12,000 per submitted card based on the item's estimated value and whether it includes an autograph. They're willing to shell out that money because a grade from a company like PSA increases the card's value and makes it easier to sell. As counterfeiting has become more sophisticated, some buyers won't even consider a card that hasn't been graded. It's not all that different from GIA certifications for diamonds. The goal is to provide information to level the playing field for buyers and sellers. Trading cards spent the last 20 years on a steady upward trajectory until the pandemic kicked into overdrive. Inflation fears, low interest rates, and uncertainty around the stock and bond markets push investors towards alternative and tangible assets. Celebrities and influencers like entrepreneur Gary Vaynerchuk, rapper Drake, and YouTube star Logan Paul spread the gospel on social media. New categories of collectibles, including sneakers and non-fungible tokens, helped attract the younger demographic. The card market skyrocketed. A one-of-a-kind Mike Trout rookie card sold for $3.9 million in August 2020, setting a record, which was beaten five months later by a $5.2 million Mickey Mantle. And that was broken again the following August by a $6.6 million Honus Wagner card. eBay, one of the largest marketplaces for trading cards, reported the category grew 142% in 2020. And then it sold more cards in the first six months of 2021 than all of 2020. The spike in demand caused cards to pile up at collectors, which wasn't equipped to handle that kind of capacity. The backlog hit 13 million cards, with nearly 100,000 new cards coming in every day. On a single day in March 2021, the company received 660,000 cards. Collectors had to rent school buses with security guards to pick them up from the post office, CEO Nat Turner told us. The companies had to make a lot of changes to catch up. It now has more than 100 card graders, up from 44 in early 2021. And a new internal training program called Grading U, helping it find new grading talent. In all, the company expects to add 680 positions this year, taking its total headcount to nearly 2,000. Collectors is also adding card grading centers in New Jersey and in Tokyo. Meanwhile, the company's tech and product teams have been building a software platform they call Card Manager, aiming to use artificial intelligence to supplement the humans in the grading assembly line, quickly identifying cards, pulling up comparison images, and running diagnostics. The software should even be able to fingerprint the cards by looking at unique anomalies on the surface, which will help detect alterations. At the same time, Collectors is expanding into new categories. It acquired the Auction House Golden last year, as well as WADA, which provides a grading service for video games. And it's building a vault in Delaware, where for a fee, it will store high value cards on behalf of customers. The company still faces challenges. The continuing avalanche of demand has prevented PSA from reopening its cheapest tiers, and it's been rationing submissions through a lottery system at the $50 per card level. Counterfeiters are getting better at making fake cards, and competition from other grading companies is getting more intense. The biggest risk is future demand. Wild price accelerations have naturally raised worries that this is a bubble and prices have slowly crept down since last year. 
but many in the industry brush off those concerns. For starters, venture capital money is pouring into the space and startups are bringing innovative new services to card collecting. The team at Collector certainly sees big things ahead, even if it means fundamentally rethinking a century-old industry.